going on y'all it's hellfire with machinemasters.com and a while ago i promised you guys a video on how to do alternating loop inside the mpc software so that's what we're going to talk about today now traditionally on older mpcs or legacy mpcs you had a very basic loop function so let's say this is the start of your sample and this is the end of your sample you play the sample back it gets to the end and then it starts back from the beginning again and then it just keeps doing that or likewise if you set a different loop point it will play to the end play from your loop point then back to the end again and you know depending on how good you were with setting the loop points it never really sounded good or clean sometimes you can get it sounding nice with like a bass note or something if you get it in between the transients on the zero crossing but for the most part it wasn't as clean of a loop as you would like um but with alternating loop what happens is your sample plays it gets to the end it does a 180 it goes back the other way and it just keeps doing like this and the result is you get a very smooth loop and uh what it's good for is basically um like let's say you got some chops and uh it kind of chop off at the end and you wanted to have a nice smooth transition into the next slice the alternating loop is gonna loop back and fill in that little gap or you know whatever you have so you now let's jump right into it and let me demonstrate this for you all right let's go okay so i got my beat going here and on this one i used the sample that i chopped up from the boonie tunes collection available on machinemasters.com so make sure you check that out and you're gonna hear that as the beat plays back there's gonna be a small gap in between some of the slices and or some of the chops and uh that's what we want to fill in so i'm gonna play this back and you can listen to it and uh hear the, the small gaps okay so you can hear the small gaps in some of the chops now normally you want to do this technique on just the individual pads, but to save time, I'm going to do it to every single pad at the same time. Now uh, keep in mind that this technique works on the MPC Touch, the Renaissance, as well as the Studio. It's all the same, the only difference is the screens look a little bit different, but the functions are the exact same. Okay, so the first thing we're going to notice is that our pads are set to one shot, so when we tap it, the entire pad plays out. Now, if you know MPC loop functions, you know that uh, the MPC loop function only works with the pad set to note on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the pads on note on. So we're gonna go into program edit. And like I said, I'm gonna set this to every pad at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the edit zones onto all and you're gonna see all the pads are lit. So now any change that I make in program edit is gonna to happen to every pad at the same time. So we wanna go into this LFO modulation page and we wanna go ahead and turn the sample play to note on. So now when we hit the pad, you get a real short burst. So you have to actually hold the pad for the sample to play out. So the issue you get from that is now when you try to play your beat back, you get this. Because the notes are so short, you're not even hearing the trigger of the sample. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to stretch the length of the samples out to basically automate the pad being held down. So to do that is really simple. You're going to go into time correction mode. The first thing you're going to check is you're going to make sure the events is set to all. Because by default, it's going to be on the last pad you hit and you want to quantize the notes for every single pad. Or... If you're doing this to the individ individual pads, you want to select the individual pads. But in this case, like I said, we're, I'm going to do this for everything at the same time to save time. All right. So um, the other thing you want to do is you want to set this to length because we're quantizing the length of the notes, not the actual placement of the note. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to set the time division to quarter notes because we know we chopped the sample up by quarter notes, as you can see on the grid. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and press do it. And now you can see the notes stretch all the way out to fill in that quarter of a note. So when we play it back, we get the same exact effect as if it was set to one shot. 
we're not done yet. We still have the, the small gap in between the slices to fix. So to, to fix that is one more step you have to do. So we go back in the program edit. And again, I have um, the edit zone set to all. So whatever I do in here is going to affect every single pad. We want to go into the samples tab now and go to the fourth page. And here we have our pad loop. What we want to do is we want to tap this and you're going to see it turns the loop on. So I like to just turn it on alternating loop. So you're just going to go one more. And right now you're going to see when it goes to the end, it's going to go back, get to the front and go back. So now you'll hear that when I play it back, it's going to be no more gap between the slices. <laughs> All right, so I mean that's basically it. Now there's a couple other things you might want to tweak in order to make it sound as smooth as possible. The first one being in the filter page, you might want to play around with the release. That's going to make the loop either longer or shorter. We can demonstrate it now to see the effect that we have. So you can see it, it stretched out the loop a little bit longer as I stopped the pad. All right, and if I change the release back short, it's gonna cut off right away, All right? So you might wanna play around with that to get the effect that you want. And the other thing you're gonna wanna play around with is go into sample edit and go into program. And you're gonna, you might want to um, tweak the the end point of the sample because the, the end of the sample might have a little piece that you might not want to be included in the loop like maybe a, a little piece of the next slice like let me see like this one for example on the end is it has that nasty little piece of sample and it, I want to cut that out so let's put this on in See, and it makes it a little bit cleaner just by taking this little piece out right here. You know, so, you know, just play around with, you know, those couple things between adjusting the endpoint and adjusting the release. You can get the exact desired effect that you want. In this case, we didn't have the, the, the issue with every single slice. Normally, when I use this technique, I only do it on the actual slices that have the gap. I don't do it on every one. I hope this, this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Make sure you rate, leave comments or extra questions if you have it. Uh, rate the video, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it, whatever. Um, and thanks for watching. All right. Peace.